Jeff Abrams. Hey. Of, of the forecast slash the everything. Um, I didn't have anything snarky, so, you know. <laughs> uh, so we, it's been a little bit since we've caught up. Um, so, what, like two weeks? Uh, you went on vacation. Um, the world is magic and kept on turning. Um, so, uh, one of the things that uh, we haven't talked about that is kind of like one of those next logical step type things um, is the uh, emergence of One Inc. as a co-op. Um, and so, what I know of co-ops, which I am going to share with you so that we can both learn together. Uh, doo -doo -doo. The, oh, no, not that. the City Market Co-op, so the Onion River Co-op, which is in Burlington, Vermont, where I used to live, um, is the most, I think it's the most profitable co-op per square foot in the nation. Um, it's like a dense little grocery store that is just jam-packed. Um, and uh, it's, it's like the Whole Foods of Vermont, uh, except with cuter people. Um, Anywho, uh, the way that they function, do, 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 participate, follow, learn, co-op news about the co-op. Cool. So there's, uh, if memory serves, there's a membership due of, I want to say it's like 35 bucks a year. Um, so not much. And then that's component one. Component two, yay, oh, maybe yay. I also set up automation for, oh yeah, okay, that's right. Um, so now it just automatically published a link to this live stream in the Citizens of One Slack. Yay. Oh, cool. Um, we, we be getting automated. Uh, so yeah, so you pay them an annual due, um, and then you are able to contribute to the co-op. So you're, I think it's like uh, quarterly you can volunteer up to, uh, I want to say 10 hours, something like that. Um, and then if you volunteer uh, that total 10 hours, then you max out the discount that you can get when you shop. Um, which I think is like, I don't know, 15% or something like that. Uh, so for 35 bucks and 10 hours of your time per quarter, you get like, you know, 15 to 20% off. And then at the end of the year, uh, they do what's called a patronage refund. Um, and so the refund, uh, is, I think the, the very clever language is um, in years of profitability, uh, yeah, profit sharing program, um, issue patronage refunds in profitable years, uh, last year was not profitable, um, but when they do a patronage refund, uh, the board of directors determine what the refund is, and then the refund is split up based on how much money the members spent within the co-op. So if you shopped at City Market once, then you get a small one. If you shop there every week, as I did, then you get a bigger one. Um, so one ink, for, for one ink, that feels like it makes more sense. Um, because we have so many different things and so many different business models that are or can be within that umbrella. Um, and the other thing is, uh, un well, with um, City Market, you could contribute financial capital, um, which is like buying food or paying the membership due, uh, but you could also contribute natural capital, so labor or time. Um, and so I started mapping out from a sense of humanity what the different types of capital are. Um, and do to do, do, really gotta fix my internet. Uh, so financial capital, um, pre-sales of, uh, of software, donations, purchases, sponsorships and investments, natural capital, physical work, intellectual and creative labor, social capital, advocacy, access and advisory, cultural capital, artistic representations, parody, uh, and then spiritual capital, attention and presence. Um, so this live stream could be considered spiritual capital because you are contributing your attention and your presence to help us um, figure out financial models. Uh, gotcha. And then having some kind of a collective ledger, obviously putting a number to spiritual capital can be a bit challenging from a, lo a, a logistics 
perspective. Um, so, so figuring out a way to loosely measure, acknowledging that those things aren't really supposed to be measured. Um, but yeah, uh, and that's kind of what John and I talked about is shifting our agreement that we have with Spiritual Bro into this notion of the One Inc. co-op. Um, and then the board of directors would be paid like a monthly stipend so that they could commit as much of their attention as possible to that process. Um, and then uh, other things like the uh, the one space, the house that I think I showed you, um, and uh, could be a, a community space that would be community owned, would be the profits would be for the community, um, what happens within it would support the endeavors of the community, um, and yeah. So cool. Um, so, so do you want to build the model of, of what you think the co-op would look like? I'm curious if you would, yeah, um, yes, uh, and then... And, and by the way, like, all of this is, like, completely changeable, right? So you throw it together, what you think it's going to be, and then you update the assumptions later, right? Yeah. So you rattle off a whole bunch of assumptions in there, like a monthly mm -hmm. monthly fee, right, additional yes. capital thrown on the back, right? Like, and we can model out assumptions about members and all those things, and we can do that on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, is that kind of what the direction yeah. you want? Yeah, and I think the, the only other thing that I'll throw in, because this is the one I wanted to talk to you about at the end of this, um, is one space, which is this co-work, co-living, community, house typey thing. separate than the co-op, but it's only It would be, oh, correct. So, so okay. one space is, because that's, one, we talked about it earlier in Citizens of One, um, but like, Mythos One, Spiritual Bro, Brian Bot, the technology behind all those things, like all all co-owned to some degree by the co-op. So not collectively, like, you know, Mythos might be partially owned by me and partially owned by the co-op. Um, Awaken Lawyer might be partially owned by John and partially owned by the co-op. So some of them might be shared, some of them might be total, it, kind of flexible deal structure. Um, 736 Sunset, which is amazing. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> like just so uh, amazing. Um, to this thing, that monstrosity, four bedroom, five bath, massive roof deck, um, porch, yay. And then this space, I think the, the right. ground floor is like 2,500 square feet or something like that. So it's, they basically built it for what we're talking about is what the realtor said. They said that like, they like threw in this wild card of like, let's build like basically a WeWork as a house. Um, and so it's this massive open space on the floor, which means that we could do gatherings like symposium or kitchen table, we could do masterminds, we could do workshops, we could have residencies, so like people stay and contribute a month of their time to working on projects for One Inc. Um, within one space. Uh, we could have authors or speakers come in and stay for three days and then organize masterminds, workshops, and, and events around them. Um, and yeah, so that I'm very interested to map out uh, as a as a component within. So two two different cool. things, one within the other. Yeah, which one do you want to start with, and then um, can you pass presenter role to me? Uh, yes, uh. and uh, do do. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Sure. Uh, Make host. You are the host now. Is it weird that I hear things like that and I think in terms of t shirts? You are the host now. No, that's great. Um, share screen. How about share? Do, 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 do. Oh, there it is. Let's share that guy. Um, okay, so this is like a generic template. Um, so which one do you want to start with? Uh, well, One Inc. is the higher level, bigger thing, but I feel like One Space is more glan that's granular and clear. Yeah, that was why I brought that's in. That's just a well, regular, uh, cool. That's why I brought in two. So, um, cool, let's... Uh, just jump on over. So basically, inside one space, it's a co-working thing. So there's members, mm -hmm. or yeah, like talk to me how it works, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do my thing over here. Is this big enough for you? Yeah, that's. I'll go a little bigger. 
There we go. Okay. Um, then I move my notes over here. Uh, so, like, what, let's start with revenue. Like, how does it work? How do you guys uh, get revenue? And so, yeah, and, and. so revenue would be. Uh, hold on, I'm taking up my, my notes as well. Awesome. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's say consistent MRR would be dues. So membership dues. Um, dues could be. Uh, could allow, you know, when we have open time, so kind of like hot desk, uh, we work style. Um, uh, gatherings, so gatherings such as symposiums, symposiums bi weekly, um, office hours, uh, dinners, things like that, um, events. Uh, uh, those gatherings are those like events that you're going to charge for? Uh, we will charge for it, and then if you are a member and you pay dues, That's then right. you would get a discount. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, so, there's, so there's membership dues, then there's gatherings or events? Gatherings. Yeah. Um, sim similar. I mean, like, it's kind of open-ended, right? Because we, we can do a tree climbing workshop, or we can do a how to create a financial model, kind of, you know. Totally. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the idea is, is that if you are a citizen, then you um, get a discount. Uh, if you're, well, so same as the city market one is that, if you pay dues, then you can, if you're a citizen, then you can, um, anyone can participate. Uh, if you're a citizen, then you get a baseline discount, so let's say 5%. If you are a citizen that it has contributed time, which is how City Market does it, so like you will actually like go there and like you'll go to their community events, so they'll do um, one of the farms that contributes its food to City Market Co-op. Uh, the people who shop at City Market Co-op will go to the farm and help the farm for like eight hours, um, mm -hmm. or they will help at like a farmer's market to talk about the co-op, and then in return for those hours, you'll get a discount on what you buy. So the dues would be one part, and then let's say, um, I don't know what it's called, but like labor hours. Uh, and if you contribute labor hours, then you increase the percentage of discount you get on the gatherings and events. Um, got it, got so it, got that it. so that's not. So there's like three tranches of of attendees. There's regular citizen attendees that pay dues. There's uh, con, con, uh, time or visitors. Uh, let's say uh, visitor, uh, visitors visitors or tu tourists tourists yes. citizens. Yes, tourists. I like tur that. Tourist citizens and uh, um, what's a what's a a valued citizen. Um, I, I can't spell either. Advocates, kind of. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, citizen, awesome. citizen plus, C I T I Z E N. Citizen attendees. Uh, citizen plus attendees. Well, citizen, citizen plus being because there's going to be a citizen that is paying dues and gets a five percent discount, and then there's going to be a citizen who has contributed hours to a project within one inc and it gets a 20% discount. Right. Um, you know, just to make your life more complicated. Nah, dude. It's, Wait, did you just do, did you just, oh my God, you're beautiful. Um, okay, all right. Uh, I see you. Uh, all right, so. And then the last one, there was one other channel. Uh, well, no, there's several. Uh, so masterminds and workshops. So uh, a, work, a workshop would be one time. A mastermind would be a consistent gathering. So I've seen masterminds that gather four times a year, so quarterly, um, uh -huh. and do like a weekend, a whole weekend thing where everybody stays in hotels and then like goes into one space together and shares. Is, and then like is has, a workshop a gathering? Uh, I would say a gathering is more of a gathering and an event are more on the same line. A workshop is more like people sitting in chairs taking notes while someone's talking. Got it, got it. And a mastermind would be similar where you have multiple people talking, but it's it's with purpose. Right. Uh, uh, okay. And it, mastermind is with an S. Thank you. <laughs> All good. I'll make tons of typos. Um, these is so these would be like it'd be like once a month thing or it'd be i guess we'll call them what are they sessions they events they're well yeah. it depends because we could do a i actually have attended a quarterly mastermind on someone else's behalf and it was uh 40 40 people it was 40 people paying forty thousand dollars a year 
and they met four times a year. I don't know why it was four for right. four, but um, and they met four times a year for three days. Uh, alternatively, so like a there's a monthly dinner mastermind, which would be a lot lighter um, in terms of right. both cost and time. But you know, obviously, you would have to have people who live in LA. But but they essentially pay recurring as well, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and really it's like we can do as much as we want as long as we don't double book. Right. Although it would be really awesome to have an event on the roof while we have an event in the living room. Just saying. Uh, sorry guys, you're going to see people walking through because we're doing a yoga class on the roof while we're also doing a mastermind in the living room. <laughs> also, there's a private massage session if you want to break out and go upstairs. Um, Part of me thinks I might go insane living in the space, but totally worth it. So workshops are similar to the events. They just have the same uh, breakdown. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Pay, right? Pay yes. Discounts? Yes. Cool. Damn, you're good. I, I, I love watching this out. organization unfold. Yeah. It spits out cash flow. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, so workshops. Do we have this kind of laid out, or is there more? Uh, all right, masterminds, workshops, gatherings, cool. Um, and then residency would be the last piece. I'm, I'm just changing in the order yeah. um, to where I think. Uh, Quantity? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK, and then the last one was residency. So in this space, as an example, we have four bedrooms. Um, so we would have perceivably one resident that's like the, to, you know, hi. Um, <laughs> I mean, have you seen the master bedroom? Like, come on. Uh, wait, hold on, I got a, the picture of this. Because the master, not that I'm like, you know, structuring an entire business around me living in a, in a, in a seven million, this is the master. Oh wait. Um, oh, you're sharing. Uh, anyway, um, so residency. So you get four bedrooms. Uh, this property in specific, the second floor has three bedrooms. The first floor has one bedroom. The f first floor bedroom is like a really nice hotel suite. Um, the second floor bedrooms are two of them are huge, and the master is even bigger. So the so the thought is is that the lower level would be like a hotel space that is owned by one ink and we theoretically we could rent it out on Airbnb but my thought was that we would rent it to um, rent it to citizens of one uh, or we would provide it for free I might have to close my window because of audio um, or we would provide it for free to like an author or a speaker that we are inviting into the space so let's say Charles Eisenstein um, we'd say hey Charles do you want to stay for three nights uh, I'm going to keep talking, but close my window. Um, do you want to stay for three nights at one space? Um, and then we will do where we'll do a mastermind around your attendance. We'll do a workshop that you'll teach and we'll do a gathering where you'll be the featured guest. Um, so we wouldn't make revenue off of that room for those nights, but we would make more revenue off of the workshops um, and masterminds because we'd be bringing value into the space. Mm -hmm. The alternative, or not the alternative, the other two rooms, so the upper rooms could be, okay, you pay $5,000 a month to live in this epic space um, and you get you know, to be party, you get to be present for every event that happens during that month. Or uh, we could do, you live in the space for free for a month and during that time, you are gonna work X amount of hours on our projects with your skill set. Uh, so those are a little bit flexible, but obviously we have rooms. So at the like worst case scenario, we get tenants. Right. Um. And if we use this space as a model, I think it's four point seven four million. Uh. All right, I'm almost set up to rock here. This is. Uh, we could also have a second layer of dues. So one one set of dues could be to be a um, 
to be a citizen of like to have access to get a discount for the space and then another could be like a co-working due where you know for x amount of hours per week you can come and work in the space but that could overlap with masterminds and stuff so just logistically just challenging also brian bot is going to be the house elf so you know it's like oh you want to get into the house text Brian bot and get the code word right. and then have like the ring, the ring doorbell managed by Brian bot. <laughs> yeah. I've like, I've wanted this for a really long time. That's so great. <laughs> Dobby at your door. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Got all the channels. Let's, uh, let's do one by one of just how we think it's going to work. All right. Okay. Yes. Um, like, what's the capacity on, um, uh, like, members? Uh, the capacity in terms of how many people can the space hold, or in terms of how yeah. many? Uh, like, yeah. You know, like, how many members do you think we could, like, actual members, right? Because, like, we may need to do, like, a, like, like, members that actually come to this. Like, that's how I was thinking about this membership, dude. Like, mm -hmm. These people come to the space and work there, right? Uh, for an event, I tried to, so, well, no, would, no, I'm sorry. So like, I'm just talking to the membership dues mm -hmm. or is that like unlimited? Well, the membership dues are unlimited. It's a question of how many members we can fit at the same time. You know, like, like my college did, you know, you have 200 parking spots and you sell 700 parking passes. Um, so it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's how, how many people are going to need to park at the same time. Um, so then that, that's really just a, so the 700 number is what I'm looking for. Yeah, so I would say to fit in the space for a gathering, to, to like really fill the space, mm -hmm. I mean, I would say it could very comfortably fit 75 people. I think beyond that, it would be a challenge with neighbors, um, but probably 100 just on the first floor alone. Uh, so let's say, let's say 70. Oh, well, 70... You're saying you could fit seventy. You fit seventy people. So then the question and is, I'm what's saying, yeah? How many? So I would say you could fit seventy people for an event. Um, as far as like uh, co-working, I think you could pretty comfortably turn one. If you if you fill just the front space, there's um, they have it set up with like a square table, a long dining table, and then they have a second sitting area. And the second sitting area mm -hmm. could easily be six standing desks, like in a row. So if you say if you say you have six desks, a long table, the kitchen, let's say six, twelve, eight, six plus twelve plus eight, uh, eighteen, twenty, da, 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 twenty-four. So if you wanted to pack the house with people who are like hanging out and working, I would say twenty. Well, uh, 20, yeah, yeah. 26 my question, people. I'm sure was not worded uh, perfectly there. What, what I'm showing, what I'm asking is, um, like, if we add five a month, mm -hmm. you're gonna end up, you know, and I don't limit this. Right. You're gonna end up with 150. Is 150 paying members conceivable? Right. right. And if we add 20 a month, I, this is just me playing with numbers, mm -hmm. right? So like 600 is 600 members conceivable. Okay. Um, because I know you can only fit 70 at a time or whatever, right. or 100 or whatever that number ends up being. Members, like, you see how that's not con connected? Like, should yeah. we sell more? Like, would we take more members than we can actually um, fit it all at once? Yeah. Um, so, okay, so go back to, I got distracted. So what was the question okay. again? So um, I'm trying to put a cap on, and maybe it's not a Number of members. members cap on the number of members for this revenue stream that I'm about to lay out? I mean, if we have, if we have events, like if we have, let's, I'm just throwing out numbers. If we have three events a week, then let's call that 12 a month. If we have 12 events a month and we figure that every member is going to attend on average two per month, which is, I think a lot, um, so two out of 12, then it would be 70, 75 people in the space per event. I suck at math. 
So then we could fit 75 people times 12 events is 900 people in the space. And then if we figured that of the 900 positions that we have to sell, we would have, we'd half that because people would attend twice, so like 450 factor of 10? I don't know. Is that, say a thousand? 10x. Okay. Or, well, let's say let's, if you have if you have a thousand if you have a thousand members, mm -hmm. and you have twelve events a month that can hold seventy five people, and you figure that every member is going to attend two, that's kind of like an, a, mm -hmm. a, a high usage scenario in my mind. Um, then you could have like you could have a thousand members. I think. Okay. Cool. Uh, and we can play with these Okay, so and then what, what's the I like how I was like you? looking up and thinking and then all of a sudden I look back and there's numbers <laughs> yeah. The uh Sorry, yeah, it's, it's, it's quick um, I'll just break so I'll do the quarterly after um, What's the average member do? Uh, um, let's say to be a member it's 50 bucks a month? No, that's a lot. Um, I mean, we work charges for a hot desk membership, we work charges like 350 bucks a month. We would not have the space or the amenities to do something like that. So tier one would just be like a quarterly, let's say a quarterly due of $150. Um, and then tier two would be that plus co-work access, which would be, let's say, 450 per quarter. Okay. And then, and then you factor in some kind of like, you can either volunteer your time or pay extra to get a discount on event tickets. So uh, there could, there could okay. be Um so is it worth building out the two tiers, or should we just blend them for now? We can easily do it, it's just... Uh... I mean, the question that I have is, if we're, if, we're, if, we're not, if we're not doing day programming, then we can sell access to use the space for co-working, um, which, the, if you, for the lower space, which means that we would be able to take meetings upstairs, Right, so private meetings upstairs, um, so that doesn't interfere. Uh, if we do workshops during the day, then that interferes. If if there's a lot of both, then it would interfere with um, the co-working. Uh, hmm. How do you do a financial model when you're not sure which is going to be more predominant? Um, you, well, you just guess, and then you come back and edit. So, like right now, I would just say just have a blanket membership, okay? And um, and like don't overthink this until the time comes, right? Mm -hmm. um, like don't think about how co-working necessarily will work yet. I guess you'll have to you'll have to think about that and, and decide later. Let's just assume these are all members, okay? And so and what people is, come work separately, I guess. Um, what is fifty? I, I would love to do. 150 a quarter. Well, I would love to do a number per month that allows us to pay the mortgage for the space. Like that's that's the break even. So so the the, the amount per month of just members that have access to the space pays the mortgage, and then everything yeah, else the is, is gravy. Uh, I don't know, but it's four point. It's listed at 4.7. I'm going to yeah, maybe just find a little calculator. Yeah. Let's so we can just get that number. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh nineteen thousand four hundred and So that's 400 members at 50 bucks a month. And if we're doing, f and that's that's not including the cost of furnishing the space and hosting events. Mm -hmm. But then if we have a thousand members, 
which that's pretty ambitious at 50 bucks a month. I love how people watch me work in Mythos and like with Brinebot and stuff like that and they're like, oh my god, like you're so fast. And then I, I'm looking at you and I'm like, I appreciate that your language is just so radically different from mine and yet like mastery. The uh, mas master of the model. How many do you think you can add in a month? Uh, like bring on? Yeah, just curious. I mean, none of this is set in I'd stone. Say, I'd like, say 50. Yeah. I mean, you know, between John and I in terms of like LinkedIn audiences and then me with Reddit and then both of our like personal networks and that's just him and I, you know, like I mean, you add in you and Trevor and everybody else, like yeah, mm -hmm. I think 50 is pretty low. Okay, cool. Uh, I think 43% four, of my 20,000 LinkedIn connections are LA based. Right. Most of whom are founders and investors. Man, man, your churn rate's going to be like zero, because they're they're really doing this because they believe in accelerating. Well, do do like 0.5 or like one percent. I'm sure there's yeah, that's what I was it's never zero. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. um, where's the cool. the mastermind revenue? Um, it's right here. So what is that? Yeah, add it. Oh wait, this is membership revenue. Just uh, to give you context, this is what we basically did so far. So if I go down here now, like the, the two things we have added is the membership revenue and the mortgage. Okay. So you would break even in September right now, right? <laughs> and, and starting in January, right? January, 2020. And I'm just throwing out this. Like, yeah. But you get a sense of how it yep. works, right? Mm -hmm. And and cash wise, we burned sixty three thousand, sixty five, sixty seven thousand dollars. Okay. And All so, right. and you, I would imagine factor. Okay, so we'll get to that later. And I'm thinking of like upfront costs. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll we'll add those each line item, right? Okay. For all that stuff. Um, yeah, this is way easier than if we were to do the financial model for one ink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Buddy. Uh, let's do the mastermind. Um, how many events a month, or should we do one a quarter? Let's let for the time being. Let's keep it easy. Let's say we have two masterminds. Um, one which is an out of town mastermind, and one which is an in town mastermind. So out of town mastermind would be uh, four three day events per year, and let's call it. Tw uh, what did you say? Four a year. Yeah. Uh, well, four four events per year, but one membership due per year. So it'd be an annual fee. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, okay. And let's say the annual fee is 22,000. Just made up that number. Okay. I'm just going to break it down monthly for now. I can always yeah. do the cash flow later. Um, so like that monthly is right here. But we can uh, just, that's just for easy, easy building. I'll do the cash flow and okay. make it an annual um, later and then accrue it. Um, so, okay. The events are important because there's probably a cost associated uh, mm -hmm. out of town events in uh, town or in space events. Well, the out of town of the out of town, not out of town events. It would be um, a mastermind with people who don't live in LA. So like the oh, so it'd be in. They would fly in from out of town. Correct. Um, got it. So um, I guess um, whatever. That'll be clear to us for yeah. now. I can, uh, you, if you want to reword those, I can't think of okay. a better word yet. Yeah, that's good for now. And then How in town. How many total mess, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what was that, one a quarter? Uh, yeah, one per quarter. Oh, that's, that's some straight up mastery. 
I would sit there and copy. I would sit there and copy paste that. How many for in town? Um, in town, let's say we do two a month, so we'll have we could have two different masterminds, um, and they each meet once per month. Okay. And they're just basically on a different subject or whatever, right? Different topic. Well, so that actually okay. This is interesting because. So the out-of-town event model that's in my head, it's like a whole thing. You have all these people in the space, and then you do like like outings together at night. So that's like hire an event producer type dealio. The in-town events would be like a dinner. So you just have a catered dinner. It's way simpler from So a, they just have a, they have a different cost structure, right? Right. Well, I'm thinking of like what's what to do more of based on the amount of energy and the impact. Um, mm -hmm. So like the in-town ones would just be uh, programmed dinners. Uh, and then like the events where you have 80 people in the space, the question is do, does, does having 10 people in the space for a catered dinner, is that more or less effort than having 80 people in the space and taking money at the door kind of thing? It would seem that like masterminds and workshops would be easier than gatherings. Simpler, I should say. Mm -hmm. But the gatherings promote the masterminds. Yeah, so I would say lean more towards masterminds and workshops. So uh, let's say the in-town ones will do, I don't know, one a week. So bump that from two to four. And then that's, OK, so that's five days out of the month that are booked now for like evening event. That's kind of how I'm. Uh, well, actually, then the. The quarterly event would be a three, not a one, because it would be a, like a three-day thing. Does that make sense? I uh, three. That's a three-day thing. So it'd be like a weekend thing. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. And how many mastermind members do we think we can get? Um, I'd say we could do 15 per pod. It's a pod. Not mastermind. Like multiples. 15 per pod, and we're going to have essentially three pods. We, four pods. I think four pods. Four pods. So well, four, four of the in-town monthly ones, and then uh -huh. one of the annual quarterly thing. Oh, so then it would be 75 total members. Mm hmm Right? Sounds, sounds right. And then let's just call it 20. Uh, okay. Uh, how many do you think we can get of those? Um, I think that we could launch two masterminds in the first quarter, quarter and two in the second, and fill those with 15 spots each. Two, two, cool. So that, I mean, that just worked out perfectly because I put 10, so, you know, you add 10 a month and you add 30 a quarter. Okay. 30 a quarter. Uh, cool. Okay, I think that's good. <laughs> uh, workshops we haven't gotten to. Where are you? You're still okay. Yep. Just tie this in. We got to add all the costs to all these two eventually. Um, yeah, but that one's gonna cut the some in. research. Yeah. Um, this is called getting rich on a spreadsheet too. <laughs> what? <laughs> getting rich on a spreadsheet. <laughs> that's that's box. pretty good. That's. I mean, it's granted it's funnier now because we're like 39 minutes into me watching you just like make money up here, which John, which John has talked about many times, and I'm like, uh -huh. it's black magic wizardry, and now I get to see, I get to see it. <laughs> the worst is like people put like, well, what would happen if I sold a hundred a month, and like they'd never sold ten. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, this is the trap to mm -hmm. see how rich you are on the spreadsheet, right? Yeah. <laughs> that can make it show. That'd be a, a great LinkedIn out. headline. <laughs> <laughs> rich, and, rich on spreadsheet. Right. Um, uh, cool. Do you want to do workshop next? Yeah. 
I'm gonna move that up. I should have put this all in my app too. It's funny. So workshop requires programming in terms of like having someone there to do a presentation, booking out the space with people who are interested in that presentation. So let's say if we do like the light version, because I'm thinking of um, there's a space that actually just closed because they didn't own the, the property. It was a, a three, three lots together in the middle of Venice. Um, and it was like, they, they called it Oasis, but they had this like barn and it was like a gym space. They did like tribal marker painting. So theirs was more kind of like burning -ish, Burning Man-ish type thing. So if we do like um, conscious communication through LinkedIn workshop, um, and that's like a nightly event, and that cost, you know, 30 bucks, um, then I think that we can do, I would say, what? It, uh, how many days have we booked per month at this point? It's like seven, uh, four, four. I don't know. So let's, do, let's do four workshops per month. Uh, we'll do like, yeah, let's do four a month. One workshop. No, let's make that eight. Eight workshops a month. Let's see what that looks like in terms of days. Eight workshops a month would be eight days a month, no? Uh, yeah. Because you're, you're factoring in days, right? Mm. Well, yeah, like number of workshops to me was number of like days, yeah. Okay, perfect. And then how many people attend and what's the breakdown between the three types of attendees? Let's say... $35 people at $30. $30 is the tourist price. And then citizens get a 5% discount, Citizens Plus get a 20% discount. Uh, let's change discounts to uh, cost or average revenue. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so 30 and then uh, citizens get a 10%? Uh, 20 uh, citizens get a 5%, Citizens Plus get a 25%. Cool. And then this is just... It seems actually, yeah. I might want to increase that discount. Yep. What's, what do we say the dues are? 50 a month? Uh, 50 yep. a quarter. 50 a month. A month. Did you do 50 a quarter? Uh, no. I would say 50 a month, but we increase the discount on the workshops. Okay. Let's just do this. Make it like up to 50%. Yeah. Starts it. So you pay, so then you pay $50 a month to be a member. And then you get, if you pay $50 a month, you get like a 10% discount on, on events. And then if you also contribute time, so like helping us host the events, like managing the front table or something like that, and you do a certain number of hours doing that, then you would get up to a 50% discount. Or, I mean, yeah. So we 25, let's change that to 50. So it'll be like a sliding scale of like how many hours you put in per quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then we can have members be like, cool, like you're in charge of like taking tickets at the door tonight, and that'll take you two hours, and those two hours count towards your, your dues. I like the way I set this up. Um, let's just call this, I keep changing the name of this one. <laughs> it's funny. Let's change that to revenue. 
and then let's screw this in and say... I'm so happy and grateful that this is recorded, because we're communicating this to any other human being. <laughs> Jeff is a wizard. <laughs> All right. Um... Okay, so we have 35 people going for the tourists. Is that total? And then we break it down? Or is that... Um, I would say that's total. That, that's total, and then we should break down the percentages, like how many, how, what percentage of tourists is it? Like 10%? Yeah. Uh, let's say... 10% tourists, I would say, yeah, I'd say like 70% citizens, and then like 20% citizens yeah. plus. Okay. So this can be whatever. So there's thirty five and then this times. I hate it when we have half a person attend. <laughs> the worst. It's too messy. So does that make sense? It'd be 280 people, 280 mm. times, uh, or 280 divided by 8 should equal 35. Yeah. Yep, cool. Yep, yep. Good. So that produces 6 grand, uh, 7 grand a month without any cogs. All right. That's interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But that's like why people are members too. Uh, what do you think it'll cost to put on these events? Like if we just did a blank. I mean, aside from the, I'd say per event for a workshop. If we're feeding mm -hmm. people, if we're well, if we're not feeding people, which that thirty bucks is kind of like just paying the presenter. So I would say snacks and like water and stuff like that. So call it if we're doing these regularly and we can buy in bulk. 35 people, 150 bucks. I mean, I did symposium, I think for like 70 and that was 20 people and had way too much food. And I basically ate dinner in the form of snacks. One of the activities was catching, I think there was a group of people who were catching nuts in their mouth and seeing how high they could throw them. I was like, do you know what's on the ceiling? <laughs> Nothing you want in your mouth. Yeah. That's the beauty of play. You just don't stop it. Workshop review. All right. Workshop revenue is there. And rich on spreadsheet. What did you call it? Getting rich on a spreadsheet. Getting rich on a spreadsheet. spreadsheet. It was rich. I wonder if I... I'm so curious if I have it. I was on a... Careful with your login. Oh, yeah, I'm not signing. Thank you. Uh, you can do the who is. Rich on spreadsheet. Rich on A. I think I did Rich on A spreadsheet. It's funny. Yeah, it's back available. <laughs> um, cool. Not anymore. We have 50,000 listeners right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, the other thing, too, um, totally forgot to throw this one in, is uh, the idea is that m most, if not all, of this will be live streamed. So when we do a workshop, members, members who are not local to LA, so let's call them remote members, and let's say a remote member is, I don't know, something like 100 bucks a year, then they get access to anything that happens in the space via live stream. Or we, so we, would, add it, we would add a membership type that has 100 bucks a year live stream anywhere in the world Yeah. for any event. Yeah, something like that. Because then, because if you're doing a workshop, then you can just tune it. Well, I mean, it's the space is perfect for it. You just do a 360 camera into the ceiling and tap a button and do exactly what we're doing right now. Hmm. Should we add that to the members? Um, yeah, that's actually a whole different class that I totally forgot, which is uh, content streaming out of the space. Okay. 
All right, do you want to do that next or gatherings? Let's do gatherings next. Okay. You might want to add a line item for noise violations. <laughs> it's new construction, so like I'm expecting that any space that we would do this in is going to be like walled. And and the space is like I not that I checked, but double paned glass and like heavily insulated. So this space in particular would actually be great for it. Mm. Gotcha. Um, okay, same process as the workshop, basically. Number yes. of events. Yeah, so uh, let's say, well, no, I would say gatherings, let's do two a month. And you would have 75-ish people in the space. So two, two well, let's say two recurring, yeah, let's just say two. And then 75, same breakdown? Uh, yeah. Actually, pro yeah. Question is how much we want to incentivize people to be members, because we could raise the prices and increase the discount. Yeah, we definitely want to incentivize membership. Yeah. So my thought is, is like a Citizen Plus, is like if you become a member, then you get like a twenty-five percent discount. So we like increase the cost of membership. If you become a member, you get a 25% discount just for being a member, which gives us a more stable monthly recurring revenue. Yeah. Um, and it's then, and then if you contribute X amount of hours, you can get up to 100% off, or like eh, not 100 because then we have to pay for costs. So I would say up to like 80%, factoring that like 20% is going to be our cost to host the event. But that we can play with. Um, yep. So discounts here, um, did you want to use the same ones or did you, and then what's the cost? Is it 30 bucks again? Um, for just an event, let's say it's 20, let's say it's 20. I think the, the gatherings are going to be break even. Okay, you think it's going to cost. I mean, unless we thousand, get sponsors. 1200 $1, bucks to do. It's $1,200 revenue per gathering. Well, and then you're factoring in, like, and then I guess if we have insurance that covers the space, we don't need insurance per event. But if we're going to, like, hire a bartender, then that's going to be pricey. Okay, so we figure that cost of goods sold is, matches that? Mm, yeah. Just break even on this? Yeah, because that's really just like sharing the space to get people to do all the other stuff. Right. Which is why there's only two of them. And if we just for went, if we didn't do any residence revenue, and then just fill the space with like, I mean, we could basically put like if we have an an event manager or something like that, like they could live in the space and then we wouldn't have to pay them, mm -hmm. or at least we'd pay them way less. All right, so yeah, this doesn't have any residence stuff. Um, do you want to go over expenses, or do you want to do residents and try to add some revenue to that? Let's section? skip the residents for now. OK. Do you want to do another? Um, what's, the, okay, what's, the, what's the profitability number, out of curiosity? Outrageously high. We should do expenses. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess that's, I guess that's necessary. Yeah, you get up, you get up there. Woot. Um, OK, so expenses. 
So let's presume that I'm not the only human being that's managing this. What did I do here? Oh, this is the annual. Okay. Sorry, give me one second. There we go. Now we got a quarter of these in annuals too. Two. We're buying a house. We're buying a house. Oh. All right, let me just do this section. Really good. We're good. Um, just for context, like you can see over here, this is like your. Um, this is like the annual revenue from each one of these things. Okay. So, like, bulk of it comes from Mastermind. Hmm. Um, which is interesting. Well, I mean, when you have that space and you say, like, you know, we're only going to share it with you 20 people at a time and. Yeah, I think that's compelling. All right. That's, sorry, I'm a stickler for formatting. All right. Um, cool. Okay, so do we want to do another revenue stream or do expenses? Let's do expenses because residency right. um, could be. Um, we could pay for people with residency. Right. Let's do, like, like their biggest cost, and I don't know if it's cost goods sold. Let's leave it down there. Is mortgage. I think mor um, mortgage, and, mortgage and food. Like, mortgage and, like, consumables um, and cleaning. Yeah. I don't know how much a cleaner costs per, on a regular basis. I um like it's it's a little hard because like most of this is cost of goods sold, but I guess we would just yeah, it's all doesn't matter. Not important right now. Mm. Uh, Where is your head structure? At? Um, like trying to get like a good. I, it's silly. I was just thinking like accounting wise, which is silly. Um, there's no need to figure out our gross margin exactly right now. It's like no. Let's hmm. just focus on like consumables. How how do you forecast that cost? Is it per event or is it per? Yeah, I mean it'd be per event per person. Per person, but we already did it a little bit with these workshops, right? I think you already had twelve hundred bucks in here. Should we just remove all that and just do per event per person there? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know, because, I mean, most of what we're doing is about co-creativity and play, which means that we're anti-consumption, which means that the events that go on, the, like, Silicon Valley networking, Silicon Beach networking things, which are like, come to our event, we have an open bar, and then they have, like, Costco veggie platters, right? It's like, we have a space, we have alcohol, come talk to people, that's their thing. Um, and we're more about co-creativity and play, so when I did Symposium last, it was like, we had sidewalk chalk and like everybody brought their own wine. Um, so it, I mean, I'm drink. I'm meeting more and more people that are drinking less and less. So I think we could, mm -hmm. it, and, and this is now a public record, but I think that it would be great for our, our bodies and our balance sheet um, that we f stray away from serving alcohol. Um, so then the question is like, I mean, serving fruit and snacks, and then we can like you know, partner with local farms, which makes it cheaper. It also is like supporting the community, so consumables. And then it becomes a question of like, it's just buying a boatload of fresh fruit mm -hmm. and healthy stuff. Um, so then, yeah, I'd say per person. And is this, does this replace the COGS that we laid out for gatherings and workshops? Pretty much. If we're always, ser if we're always serving healthy snacks. Right. 
Con conscious consumables. Yeah, let's go with that. Conscious consumables. Mm -hmm. What was that beat? I don't know. Not me. No. All right, so we think that's going to be. Uh, let's see, I did. Per person. Let's do. It's like seven or eight dollars per person. That's that's okay. that's high. I think I did like eighty dollars for last symposium. We had fifteen people. We had too much food. All right. So for the number of, I'm gonna call this number of. It's just seven. And guess people number of people. Citizens. Uh, and this is going to be how many people are coming to the masterminds events and. The masterminds will have an actual meal, so that'll be a, a higher price. Okay, so we'll do. We'll yeah, the, do... Ma the masterminds will be catered. The workshops and the gatherings. Well, let's just say for now that they won't be. Okay. Let's do it. All right. I don't know. Um, and I would say that the gatherings, gatherings are going to be more about people moving, and less about people eating. Okay. So the seven now seems high. I'd but, say between um, six and seven per person. But we're basically going to have all these people, all these attendees, plus all these attendees. That's how many people are running through for both gatherings and events. That's per day. Cool. Uh, I don't like the way I did that. I'm just going to go ahead and say. And you said seven bucks, but we can change it. Do you want to change it to five? Uh, let's do six. Don't get crazy. And you get grapes, and you get grapes, and you get grapes. <laughs> that seems reasonable. Um, okay, and then mastermind events, the meals will yeah, be... I honestly have no idea how much that. catering costs. How many of that we're doing one per quarter? So I, I could pull something out of my ass. I have no clue. Yeah, because not everybody is coming to the same one, too. Like, so I don't have a proper headcount, but let's just say per event. Well, let's say the in town ones, it's going to be a catered dinner. So let's call it 30 per person. Well, how many people come to the in town? Like, that's, I don't have that data. So. Uh, didn't we already say that? It was. I don't think so. I don't think I put it in here. Yeah, yeah, new mastermind members, recurring mastermind, tail mastermind. These are, yeah, I didn't. I think we figured it was 15 per pod. I, I remember you making fun of Oh, yeah, that was right. That was right. So, so that would be 15. 15 times 30 times 4. 15 people, 30 per person, 4 per month. Mm hmm Yep, got that. And then what does that cost per head for the thirty? Meal? I would, I would say, well, no, because there's, eh, that's a lot. And then I'd for say the, that the cost would be, the cost couldn't be 30, the cost would be like 18. Okay. And then we're going to add in the people that go to the other one. Mm hmm. The out of that, town one's, that one's going to be way more expensive. Um, because we're going to do multiple catered meals, so we'll do lunch and dinner. Mm -hmm. Let's say and it's over three uh, days. Yeah. Okay. Let, well, I so, guess we already had three in there. Yeah. So three, three times. Okay. So three days. I'm just making times this up, but people. let's say you eat breakfast by yourself, or we have coffee, and then so that's lunch and dinner, and then lunch and dinner. 
and then lunch at three lunches, two dinners, one dinner offsite. The dinner offsite wouldn't be catered. We would it'd be like included. So let's say let's say six meals, three lunch. Yeah, say three lunches, three dinners. Lunches will be eighteen a person. Dinners will be tw will be twenty five a person, and then alcohol would be on top of that and usually it's a lot of drinking so um, let me make up a number that sounds reasonably right uh, 20 We have like 200 per person for a three day. Let's call it 250 if we make it super bougie. I mean, again, the, the one that I'm thinking of that I went to, I'm like, that's where my head's at. It was $40,000 a year. And then it was for three days. It was for How many people go to the out of town ones? Yeah, so the one that I'm thinking of, it's called Flight Club, um, super cool. But so they, uh -huh. They get a hotel conference room in San Diego, so that's a cost. They do lunch in the room, so that's for three days. You pay for your own hotel room. They do lunch in the room. It's catered by the hotel, so whatever that would cost. So that's kind of the like $20 per person catered lunch in the space. Um, and then they do like a dinner out, which they pay for. Um, so that would be like us reserving a room and then also alcohol would be involved. And the, again, this, this one that they went to, it was like, they lined up, it, it, they, they were heavy drinkers. Um, I don't think that we would be as much. I think we'd be heavy weed smokers. Um, hot box, the 25, he was like, Hey, we're going to have a, we're going to have a hot box event. Um, that'd be hilarious. Uh, sponsored by, um, yeah, so I would say for the masterminds, like two, two fifty to like three hundred per person over the course of three days, just in terms of like food, not including alcohol. Yeah, but how many people go to those events? Oh, I would say, I would say forty, forty to fifty, like forty to fifty in the mastermind. I don't know how many people would actually go. Maybe three, three, four, so like seventy five percent of it. So. Let's call it 50 people in the mastermind at 25,000 apiece with a 75% attendance rate. This is, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm spitballing I mean, because there's yeah, 50, so much to research here. 50 times 75% would be 37.5. Let's call it 40 just to be conservative. Okay. Um, cool. I mean, I like that there's not a ton of negative numbers. Mm -hmm. Right, interesting. Uh, so consumables, cleanings, and then outfitting. Yeah, the other thing is like outfitting like the space. That first event, though, like we're not going to have, like, we've got ten mastermind members. You're not going to throw an event for. I'll just take that one out. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, consumables. We already got that. Mastermind events, cool. We did that separate. Um, cleanings, how often do you need to clean every day? I mean, oh, yeah, because yeah, if, so if we're doing an event. How many square feet? <laughs> um, 4,300. Mm, yeah, I'm just going to do mine. Twenty and then forty-three hundred. I'll say times twenty-five. 
That can't be right. Wait, what did you say? 25? Uh, I was saying 25 cleanings is a lot. Did you do 20? You do 25 or less? I mean, how many how many days have we booked so far? I have no idea. We should probably keep that metric. Is that 18? No, that's... Well, we got 8 plus... Two, ten, plus four, fourteen. I mean, you would get it cleaned every day, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would say cleaned every day. And then let's figure what three hundred bucks per. Yeah. Times thirty days. I mean, it. Ooh, that's a big expense. <laughs> I mean, it's basically uh, it's basically a fancy animal house, so yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay. Utilities? Uh, no clue, but yes. What you... For that space, I, I have mean, no idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, air, yes, air, like, like, electricity is going to be off the chain. 2,000? That's probably too much, no? Uh, over, yes. Yeah. I think it's over. But we can always play with these numbers later. But I don't have to get it right. Uh, as much as I love Dobby the House Elf AI, Dobby.ai, ooh, I wonder if that's available. Um, don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> I think we would need a... Um, house manager. So let's say $5,000 a month for that human. Okay, uh, meals, anything else? Um, daily massages for Brian. Don't actually put that in. I was gonna, I was gonna put it in there, but I was gonna <laughs> kick it out until you're profitable. <laughs> but just right away. <laughs> oh, Dobby dot bot is available. Um. I mean, you might want to do, like, other. I guess consumables. Well, furniture, like, like fit it, outfitting the space is gonna be a big one, and a big upfront build one out. build out. Yeah. Right, and then. What do you think? 50,000? Yeah, I was going, I was going to go 20 for like two or three months. Well, I'm thinking like furniture to fit out a 4,300 square foot space, plus like decor, plus like, you know, um, plates and shit. Um, and then like the live stream camera, which I was like, yeah, so yeah, let's do that. And then okay. down, down payment, which I have absolutely no clue. Yeah, eventually we'll have to do like the um, And taxes. Yeah. But we're well, a co-op, so. Is that not part of the, is that not part of the mortgage? You know, pack that in there. Yeah. Well, I don't know, because the calculator thing that I did was, um, Four, yeah, what are property seven, taxes on that? I would five. I would check that. That'll be a big expense if we screw that up. Um, and what are you doing for down payment? You think? Say twenty. Four million dollar house. Times twenty percent. Is it four point what? This is John's area. Um, yeah. Damn, sold for eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars in two thousand five. Okay, looking at Trulia in this price range is very distracting. Um, let's just go with I don't know, because I don't know. 
So taxes, uh, so down payment and taxes, taxes are a big question. Zillow. All right, yeah. On Zillow? Zillow? Yeah, you usually can. Zillow. It's address? 736 uh, Sunset in Venice. Hundred days on Zillow, eight hundred views, price cut by half a million. Taxes are twenty three K a year. Taxes. Let's just say we get that monthly for now. Let's Okay. Now let's do all right. So as of right now, you need about eight hundred and. 50, 60K, if everything goes according to this plan. 800, say it again, 800 and... Well, your, yeah, your low point of cash is... That's including the down payment of 20? Yeah. Jesus. Well, a 20, 20%, yeah. right? Yeah, well, that's 800K. I mean, I just still am surprised at that. So what do you, so when you raise, you would raise, what, 2X? Mm, yeah, I mean, the, the, I think you've got to do like a little sensitivity on this, right? To mm -hmm. see, um, and then what you're comfortable with, like a couple iterations, just in case everything doesn't go as planned, and then you grow that number, right? Mm -hmm. Push stuff out, you you know, you play with it until you've got something you believe in, which mm -hmm. would be your base model, right? So we'll we'll have to play with this. Um, that's, that's magical. So I you, keep, you uh, just did in an hour and 15 minutes what probably would have taken me a month if I tried to do it by myself. <laughs> yeah, that's without any real data, too. Yeah. Really plug in real data. Um, I should give you a uh, login to this, and then I should set you up. Yeah. You should sign up. There'll be an error. Okay. Just with the Gmail, okay. and then all the models in, so you can always have them organized. Oh, I didn't uh, know that that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, won't, I won't show any of my real data, but um, where do I go? Forecast.io. Uh, just go to app.theforecast.io. I kind of hide it there. Um, well, not anymore. And then just create <laughs> create a little login. There might even it might air out because I may not have the onboarding right because I I didn't care at this point. Um, but once you're in the system, I'll load this up and and give you. Uh, a little yeah, little. it aired out. That's fine. Yeah, that mean yeah. you're already a user in my system. I just need to, you know, link up some things. So cool. I'll throw this model in there. You can check it probably tomorrow. I'll let you know, and then okay. we'll we'll start to stamp these out, mm -hmm. and then um, and then we'll we'll you know once we're kind of set up and rolling on on one or two of them, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll tie in the actuals and we'll yeah. see chart along the plan. You kind of see it now, don't you? Yeah. Well, this is going to be fun too because basically, if you scroll up, um, so I'm looking at all right. So the the key metrics, so membership, mastermind, workshops, gatherings, and residences. So if I create basically a memo in Mythos to be like, okay, membership dues, all right, membership dues to one space gets you this, um, and then just write out essentially like what we're talking about and then have a sign up form and then say like expected launch on this day. Then it's if just... I was doing this, if I was coaching you on this, like mm -hmm. I would say only do mastermind first. Mm. Well, you are coaching me, and you just did. So, so yeah, only do only do mastermind first because that gets you to profitability without mm -hmm. all the ancillary stuff, and then you roll out the other stuff when you're ready. Okay. That, that, I mean, I mean, that doesn't mean like you could do free, you know, free come to the place, whatever. Like you can invite people whenever you want. I just think, yeah. that, I mean, maybe it's easy. Maybe it's just easy to to spin up the membership too. Um. Well, I think that more people. I mean. Yeah, um, let me rephrase there's a lot that. Of ways to do that. I wouldn't want you to uh, don't miss the membership targets. <laughs> okay. You can, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. what that meant. You can do yeah. it all. 
uh, I wouldn't miss that one because mm-hmm. that produces, you know, the, I mean, look at this revenue stream right. and everything else. Yeah. Right. So like if I were to pick one to, to make sure I nail yeah, it, see that one. Got it. now you can do it all. Um, and this one may be easier, like right, like to get it going. Well, see, I, and I thought mass, I thought membership because membership is consistent, and recurring, but so is mastermind. So, mm-hmm. what did we say for the the in town mastermind? Was the cost to it? What did we assign? Mm, the in, I kind of jumbled it all together. Um, the uh, two twenty five ahead for cost, but not for what were we charging for it. Oh well, we're charging in, we're charging the same amount, which is uh, twenty two thousand a year. For the out of town ones. ones. I did that for both. Oh yeah, let that that makes sense. So let's say the out of town one is twenty two thousand a year, and the in town one would be like, yeah, okay, that's a radical change. Um, eh. Like eleven thousand, it's cut in half, because that's going to be like a, a monthly dinner. Mm-hmm. So you'd split this from just like all your mastermind people to you'd split it in the two channels and charge one half, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to do that. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think people would pay twenty-two thousand dollars a year for a monthly dinner. Well, actually, a lot of this changes considering the fact that one space is owned by one ink, which means that every dollar that someone puts into this, they're going to get a refund back based on how much they put into it. So if someone puts in $25,000 to join a mastermind, then they could get a refund back based on the profitability of the entire enterprise. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's where it becomes an artful communication process. All right. Yeah. Do um, you want to stop here for the day and then yeah. uh, circle back? Yeah. This is like this Maybe. was your first experience with modeling, right? So like it's going to cause your brain to over time to think a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're going to come back like each time we do this, right? Yeah. Um, we 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 add in the new information that you you know that you learned. So what is it, how does this look, like overall super high level, how does this look to you in terms of like a fundable concept? Um, Like this, I mean, I again, I'm just kind of like collectively looking at these numbers. This is it seems wildly, like actually... wildly profitable. <laughs> so that's not, that's not the issue, right? The issue is like what you need to prove right, right. would be, uh, how do you acquire mm-hmm. right members, masterminds, you know, attendees, all those things, and how can you keep them engaged and and you know within the community long term? Because if you can prove those two things, there's not much, you know, that I'm worried about. It's not like you're building an app that needs to catch on and stay on, right? right. Like, no, you're building a community that needs to stay committed to itself. Yeah. Um, well, and, and then. And if we have, if we have the, <laughs> I'll tell you this story to, to end it. So I, I had um, Ghost Influence was my uh, like marketing Slack community where I taught people how to do Reddit marketing. Um, and I had a, a guy that I met through Reddit uh, who was like, yeah, you know, you gave me an idea because like I got connected with these investors who have a brothel in like the Caribbean or something. Um, and they were like, you know, we, we want to make money on our assets when they're not in use, implying that like we have prostitutes that when it's, they're not with a client, they're not making us money. So like, how do we make money? And he looked at Ghost Influence and he's like, I have an idea. So he, he constructed this idea where using Slack, each channel in Slack would be a different room of the house. And anytime a girl is not with a client, she would be live streaming and you would pay for a membership to the digital house and you'd be able to bounce between the rooms. Um, and that's kind of what we're talking about from a live stream thing is that like anytime we're having an event, anytime we're having a workshop, um, we would but be able to turn on that section. Yeah, dude, I think that's good. 
um, and you'd be able to have access to like, like you could have online access to the workshops, online access to the masterminds. Um, yeah. And then like if you come to the mastermind and you have digital attendees and then someone on who's digitally attending, attendee, attending, um, asks a question, then you would have mythos providing the context. So basically it's, if you're in the space, you're getting press and marketing based on who you are and what you're bringing to the space. And that's, I mean, case in point, like we're live, we've been live streaming for the last hour and 25 minutes. From my perspective, you're doing numbered wizardry, right? And you're doing numbered wizardry because John, like, you know, taught you and like, and then that's a whole story of how I met you through John. And so like, I don't need to say Jeff is cool. Like, here's Jeff being cool. Here's Jeff, like contributing his expertise to this collective. Um, and so that's kind of the beauty of it is that like you show up and you contribute and then everybody sees that. Um, so right. it's, it's the, the idea is really like tribalism at scale. Um, and so if you're a dick, everybody sees it. If you're amazing, everybody sees it. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah. So I think that that would be the next thing to add would be a content stream. Yeah. No. <laughs> non zero sum. Yeah. That's all, like, that's how I think <laughs> like you're a dick, right? We'll see it. Yeah. Well, that's a, I think that the society as it is today allows people to hide misdeeds um, just in the way that technology and communication and, and business is structured. Um, but yeah, I mean, having having a live streamed house is kind of like, like, like we're, we're making space for people, but we're also allowing people to observe the space. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I think that <laughs> I think that two thousand dollars a month in utilities is going to factor in our like fiber connection. <laughs> <laughs> consistent, <laughs> consistent bit rate. Um, cool. All right, amazing. Uh, stoked to share this with John when he's back from Europe. Um, and let's yeah. uh, let's talk more because I think this is this is the big thing, but um, the same math is going to happen on a smaller scale with uh, the Tesla talk show. Um, Cause that's, yeah. I mean, you know, we can only have six people in that at a time, but like using John's car, I've just basically been like hitting up friends and like, Hey, do you want to go for a ride? And surprise, surprisingly to me, um, I thought all of my nerdy friends who lived in LA definitely had been in a Tesla. Um, but right. apparently that was not accurate. And apparently those who have been in a Tesla were in the Tesla of someone who had had their Tesla for a long time and don't drive like John or I. Um, so like if I have someone in the, if I have someone in the car and they're like, has everyone, I literally, it's now common. I'm like, has everyone been in a Tesla? And like, someone will be like, no. And I'm like, great. And you know, first straight away. And they're like, holy <laughs> shit, this is an SUV. Right. And then it's like my 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 process now is like fast acceleration, fast acceleration. Hey, look, it's driving itself. Okay, cool, let's drive. Like it's like right. it's like and as long as I do like those two and then like maybe take a sharp turn, then people are like every time someone gets out of the car, it's it's in this order. It's Falcon Doors acceleration, auto drive. Oh my god, big screen. Oh great, we're here. Like it's right. consistent enchantment. It's hilarious. <laughs> That's great. Uh, thank you, sir. This is yes. magic on a page. Yes. Cool. No problem. Uh, yeah, we'll do it again. Amazing. All right, I'm going to stop the stream now.